And going forward with that, you know, the if you want to discuss the pharmacy-led oral chemotherapy management program, you know, if it's implemented at your institution, how you, you may help with adherence with that, which we have discussed a lot of adherence so far, but anything else about that? And then, and then again, touching on medication access with that. Oh, sure. Um, so at University of Maryland, pharmacists are in, involved in some clinics. We'd love to be in all clinics if, if we had enough people. Um, and we've been able to implement processes to provide um, initial education, ideally um, in clinic during that clinic encounter. Um, and if not in clinic, having an initial follow-up call two to three days after therapy is decided that that clinic visit when education uh, or when therapy is is decided upon um, to assess medication comprehension retention as well as helping with that access the medication access piece i think either way we're as pharmacists in the in the clinic we're always working on how to facilitate and uh, improve medication access initially and then also for, for refills um, because that timely access for, for CLL and leukemias, lymphomas in general is, is really important. Um, I think medication access certainly includes discussing with patients and pharmacies, insurance companies, and also ensuring that patients have the correct up-to-date prescriptions. Um, if there was a dose change, the prescription really um, uh, reflects that. The patient has a valid prescription. Refills are sufficient. You know, the patient knows to how, which pharmacy to follow up with and, and how soon to do that. Um, and so I think the access piece is really helpful in our management programs. Um, again, I think combination therapies can be extremely complicated for everybody involved not just the patients. And it's just getting more and more complicated with lead-in phases for different oral agents and completely different schedules. And so part of the education, I think, should involve developing a clear communication plan for both IV and oral therapies. Um, and overall, our approach to oral chemotherapy education um, mirrors um, much of the resources from, from the HOPA, um, Hematology Oncology Pharmacy Association website and resources and some of their checklists that I found very helpful, as well as the Oncology Nursing Society um, Adherence Toolkit. Those are some of the, I think, the go-to resources for those sort of education and adherence practices. Um, as far as adherence and toxicity assessments, um, certainly for, for certain medications, we might um, follow up with the patient sooner after a week or two. If we expect acute toxicities, certainly, for example, in a patient that's starting venetoclax outpatient, we would follow them more closely because of the risk, for example, of tumor lysis early on. Um, and otherwise, we, we aim to follow patients monthly and then we might move to every three months based on determining clinical stability, which is made by you know, the pharmacist working with the provider and nurse in that designated clinic. Um, and also our process in sort of implementing these management programs is a really collaborative one. And so um, at the committee quality improvement level at our institution, um, we have many of the key nurse, pharmacists, and provider stakeholders um, as well. So that's kind of what we do within the clinic setting. Um, we also work with our specialty pharmacy colleagues at our institution very closely and certainly others at other, um, other pharmacies, depending on where the prescription needs to be filled. And um, so we're sort of working on um, evaluating some of our um, programs now from a quality um, perspective. What has been your experience in, in managing these patients and following up and how does that work from your in your practice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in specialty pharmacy, you know, we, you know, we intake the prescription and it eventually gets to a pharmacist to determine clinical appropriateness and things like that, uh, which is rarely a problem, but but Really, I think the best form of 
much like in a cancer, the best form of treatment is prevention on the first place. So I think the best way to maintain the adherence is to stress the importance of it in the initial counseling that you know a pharmacist would provide to a patient. And that would be, you know, developing a strategy, developing a calendar, developing a time of day that's going to be best for them to take the medications. And like you mentioned, all three of them, all the, the three main therapies we're speaking of today have different factors that need to be considered when we develop that schedule. But in medication access, you know, of course, we, any specialty pharmacy is going to work with insurance, is going to work with access, um, access, patient access foundations that can provide copay assistance. Um, you know, the manufacturers for commercially insured patients are almost always going to have copay cards that'll take a $150 copay down to $10 or, you know, however that might, that might work for every individual drug. So, you know, we make sure we have databases full of those ready to load them up, you know, pretty much without asking a patient because, you know, no one's going to say no to, you know, much lower copays. So we help with that a lot. And, you know, just, just kind of following them up. If, if they are filling it in every 37 days, asking them why instead of every 30 days and kind of keeping on track with patients as best we can to, to make sure we're maintaining that adherence long term with follow ups with clinical staff and, and things like that and making sure the prescriptions are coming in. If they have a change in dose, asking them why. Um, you know, was it because of a side effect? Was it because of something we could have prevented possibly? Or is it because you're taking a new medicine that we can, you know, that you need or don't need, you know, and, and trying to make sure we're staying on top of everything from that angle as well as, as a pharmacy and as pharmacists. Yeah, I think it's so interesting to, to share both of our experiences because I think it just highlights that there's, there's so many people that are involved in, in each patient's care that are, um, that can be so helpful in, in the education. And so I think it'll be important to see, you know, as, as some of the practices evolve, really trying to improve the communication between all those involved so that we're, um, you know, that we're working together and that everybody's sort of um, aware of, of of the clear treatment plan for the patient if that changes so that everybody can be successful in educating the patient and detecting interactions and and helping with adherence mm -hmm. um, and so how exactly do we do that across the across the board without a integrated system so everybody's seeing the same information it's it's really hard and so mm -hmm. you know i think communication is key here and realizing that we're all kind of colleagues that are working together for the same same purpose mm -hmm. and I think that's so much easier when everybody has the same information um, about that patient including that patient because obviously that can be really confusing for the patient if they're getting um, lots of different information so I think that's great 